Hi, this is the first video of week one's lecture, and we're going to be talking about what makes health economics matter, what makes it interesting. So why health economics? First of all, health economics is interesting because it's huge. It is a huge share of the U.S. economy. Um, it's also complicated by uncertainty in healthcare spending and risk, financial risk, risk of contagion. Um, and these are some of the reasons why governments around the world are so deeply involved in the financing and administration of the healthcare sector. So first of all, the share of the economy going to healthcare in the United States is massive. The U.S. healthcare economy, you can call it, that sector, um, is huge. So the overall economy is $19.4 trillion. So in 2017, you can think of that number, you know, when somebody says, oh, you know, U.S., the government wants to spend X amount of money on a particular initiative, you can compare that to $19.4 trillion is kind of the size of the pie in the year of 2017. Out of that $19.4 trillion, more than one out of six, so approaching 20%, was spent on health care, was spent on health care. In 1960, by comparison, it was one out of every 20 as opposed to one out of every six. So that trend where more and more of all money is going to health care has been rising around the world, but in the U.S. it is particularly um, stark. So no other country in the world spends as much on health care as the United States. So a good question is, what are we getting in return for that money? It's an economics question about value. So just to visualize that trend, on the left-hand axis here, it's health expenditures as a percent of GDP, and that's trended out in orange. So the percentage of all GDP that's going towards health care is increasing. And in blue, it's the share, it's the total value of GDP over that period. So it's growing. And not only is it growing, but more and more of it is going towards health care. So health is uncertain and contagious. Health care as a kind of product, it's different from, let's say, the markets for bananas or for televisions. In particular, there are two interesting economic properties. And one is uncertainty. You don't know at the beginning of the year how much health care you're going to need. You could, you know, your appendix could burst or you could like get in an accident or crash or something like that. So you just don't know how much health care you're going to need over the coming year. And for that reason, it's very difficult to plan. Um, also, contagiousness. It doesn't matter what your neighbors are doing with respect to purchasing bananas, but in healthcare, if your neighbors are not getting a flu shot, um, it can affect you. So it's complicated for, by these characteristics. Uncertainty is what is behind the market for insurance in other products and also in healthcare. One day, if you break your leg, you might need to buy a lot of medical care and your insurance will come in handy at that moment. It transfers money to you to be able to meet your need for expensive medical care in that potential outcome. Most people don't like risk, um, even like separately from the actual payment, the uncertainty around that potential payment, they're two separate feelings, each of them that are not pleasant. Um, so insurance protects you from the uncertainty. Uh, insurance as a product provides peace of mind. So it is the uncertainty of healthcare that um, creates a need for insurance. So insurance, though, is in specifically in the realm of healthcare, has two kind of problems when you're trying to purchase it, when you're trying to have like a good market for health insurance, there are going to be two problems and they kind of work together. So one of them is adverse selection. In adverse selection, it's the fact that, okay, the people who end up selecting into the market for insurance or for better insurance that covers more and has more generous terms, those individuals um, are the ones who need more care. 
So it's not completely random who's going to draw from this insurance policy. Uh, there is a the the pool of people is selected adversely for people with the most need. And then there's moral hazard. Moral hazard happens after the fact. So after you get this insurance, all of a sudden you want to use more medical care because you have this insurance protection. So people just having the insurance coverage, regardless of you know your health status when you decided to enroll, once you have that insurance coverage, uh, you're likely to use it more. So that makes it kind of hard from the insurance company's perspective to um, to be able to plan for how much that person's going to use um, because they might be sicker than the, reg the average population and they also might use even more than they would have otherwise because of adverse selection and moral hazard respectively. Now that was about uncertainty but there is also the issue of contagiousness. Uncertainty is related to insurance protecting against that uncertainty. Contagiousness is more of like the public health movement. Um, so contagiousness is a form of an externality. If you've ever taken an economics course, you might be familiar with the concept of an externality. This is when a cost or a benefit of an interaction is borne by somebody external to the two people in the interaction. So for example, unrelated to healthcare, if there is a company that is um, bottling up the water from a spring and selling it on the market and it's you know they can just take it from the spring for free perhaps and the person then they can afford to sell it to a buyer for very cheap but all those people who live along the river they no longer have access to that river they are bearing part of the cost and they're not necessarily being compensated so that would be an example of an externality because individuals who are external to the transaction of purchasing that bottled water are bearing some of the costs and um, the same can be said of in, in healthcare, especially when it comes to something that could be contagious. So having a vaccine for the flu, you benefit, but also the people around you benefit because they, um, you're not carrying the flu and they will be less likely to get, it, to get that disease from you because you don't have it. So those benefits are being borne by individuals external to the transaction. Um, when there are externalities, it's, it can undermine the efficient functioning of markets because usually in a transaction, in a price, in the price of anything, you want it to, you would expect that it's going to reflect all of the um, costs that the seller incurred. But when some of the costs are being borne by other people, then it makes the price of the object much cheaper than the true total cost to society. So we might overconsume, let's say, bottled water. Um, in healthcare, it's kind of the opposite. So the thing that's being borne by external people is benefits. So the benefit is actually greater than what the individual is perceiving in that instance. Um, but in either case, it can lead to an inefficient level of consumption of a good because it doesn't accurately reflect the, the costs and benefits.